you're just committing crimes in prison and other people are committing crimes around you or towards you at the prison. Don't become institutionalized. Just try to be the best that you can be each day. And, and just one second. Uh, Vashon, could you? Judge, I'm getting them together right now. Okay. Um, for Mr. Munoz, there was not a PSI. PSI already. No, it's just the criminal history, correct? Yes. And do you have the criminal history for me to view? Yes, and counsel, have you seen the criminal history? I do. I have no objections. Okay. And then I'll call it. Just let me review this very quickly, then I'll call your case. All right. Court is going to call 2024 CR 007361, 2024 CR 007359. State versus Johnny Abel Munoz. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Can you ask for the state of Texas? For Adrian, the defense? Adrian Bettis. And are you Mr. Munoz? Yes, ma'am. All right. You entered a plea in each of these cause numbers on September 10th. You entered a plea. And the cause number ending in five nine to count one and count two, you entered a plea of guilty and you pled true to the repeater allegation. And the cause number ending in six one, you pled guilty to counts two and counts three and true to the repeater enhancement allegation. In each of the cause numbers, the court found uh, the counts, found there was sufficient evidence to find you guilty of each counts and found the enhancement true. According to your plea bargain agreement, punishment is to be assessed at a cap of 40 years in the prison. There's an affirmative finding of a deadly weapon. There are no applications. The cases were run concurrently. The state is taking in consideration 2024 CR 5164 and 2024 CR 007370. In each of the cause numbers, counsel, you waived PSI, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right. Uh, the court has reviewed the defendant's criminal history without any objection uh, from the defense. And it's the court's uh, understanding. Do you have any witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right. Then the court will hear argument. Defense, you're asking for, I'm assuming, 40 years. Is that correct? Uh, state judge. I'm sorry, state? Uh, yes, Your Honor. And just one moment. Excuse me. On this case, I don't have the stipulations. <laughs> On both cases, it's a uh, 2024 CR 007359 and 2024 CR 007361. No problem. All right, State, I'll hear your argument. Uh, judge, this case. It's an incredibly serious one. Uh, these were called out for suspicious first campus motel. All right, just one moment. Excuse me, everyone. You all need to whisper as though you were spies. If you cannot do that, then you all need to stop talking. All right, you may proceed. Uh, they're investigating a suspicious first campus motel. Uh, when they arrived, they attempted to locate the defendant. Uh, and one of the officers was looking down a hallway and was shot at by the defendant. The officers had to take cover. Several people from the motel from inside their rooms came out. The defendant at that point forced them at gunpoint to let him in the room. Uh, he then let them go, but continued firing at officers. He then also fired at other through the walls of the motel and could have killed several other people. Several people had to evacuate the room. Several people had to lie down on the ground to avoid any type of gunfire. This is incredibly serious. We think that 40 years is more than appropriate here. He could have killed multiple officers and multiple bystanders. All right, defense. Judge, th this in fact is a serious case, but Johnny has serious problems. And I'm asking that the court give him uh, mercy today. And I am asking for the minimum 15 years. Um, I'd ask the court to take judicial notice of the, the court's file. Um, in it, there's a competency report uh, that was completed. And in that competency report, uh, the doctor uh, notes a few things about Mr. Munoz, which I think uh, frankly, should be taken into account and decided his sentence. 
Um, Mr. Munoz appears to have a mental illness of some kind. It's never been diagnosed, but um, the doctor did review records. Uh, medical records did talk to his family. His father did have a mental illness, and it's been suspected that Johnny has one. Johnny got locked up at 12 years old for the first time. He has had um, uh, tr trouble with drugs and alcohol. He is an alcoholic. And on this particular occasion, he states that he was on a bender. And it certainly doesn't excuse what he did. He knows he's responsible for what he did. But he did what he did because he was on drugs. And he was on drugs because he has an addiction. So we, we have a cycle that uh, uh, Mr. Munozis had been having to deal with his entire life. And yes, this could have gotten very, very bad. Um, but thankfully, um, it didn't get as bad as it could have. Um, I, I think that uh, Johnny uh, uh, needs to uh, hopefully be put in a therapeutic community at, at prison. Um, I think that he needs a whole bunch of counseling, a whole bunch of classes that, and I hope that PDCJ is going to offer that and that he takes full advantage of that. But I, I don't think that he's a monster that needs to forfeit the balance of his adult life. I think that an appropriate sentence would be somewhere in the 15 to 20 year range. And that's what I'm asking that you do. Thank you. All right. So I have several questions. My first question is what is his mental illness. I don't think it's ever been diagnosed, Judge, and I don't want to tell you that for sure he has one. Uh, frankly, given the facts of this case, I thought from the get-go that I should file a competency exam, also based off of the defendant's initial behavior. That very well might have been just because he was on drugs, but, but there, as far as I know, there's not been an official mental diagnosis. So he is competent? Oh, yes, yes. And he was saying at the time of the offense. Yes. All right. So then here's my next question. Previously, he went to prison for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Is that correct? Yes. So why did he have a gun? Because he's not allowed to have a weapon. I don't have a good answer for that, Judge. He shouldn't have had a gun. And I know that I'm asking a lot, but... That's my job to ask for a lot. No, no, I understand. <laughs> and um, I, I know, I know very well, Judge. He might not be, it might he might not be deserving of mercy. But that's kind of the point of mercy is to to be merciful to the people that don't deserve it. I'm just asking that you show him a little bit of grace today, Judge. All right. I don't think 15 years is appropriate for this offense. Um, for the aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, how long was he in prison? 15 years. So he was in prison for an aggravated assault with a deadly weapon for 15 years. And previously in his criminal history, he was placed on deferred adjudication. What was that offense? Was that the deadly conduct? I believe so, Judge. The ag assault, he was convicted in place and confinement in 2008 for 15 years. The trying to find the deadly conduct. He was convicted and also placed on for 15 years. All right. All right. This is this is where I'm at. And I will tell you, whenever you go to judges school, they always tell you say as little as possible on the record, right? But I'm a firm believer that when you explain to people a little bit why you're doing the things that you're doing so people won't think it's arbitrary. When I was a defense attorney, I would always feel that people were just randomly maybe throwing out numbers. And I'm not saying that uh, the state is doing it in this case. Um, I think the offer that they tendered is an appropriate offer in this, this case. A lot of times when people have cases that are aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, if somebody's pointing a weapon at somebody, if somebody's showing a weapon at somebody and threatening them, uh, people focus a little bit of what, 
what might have happened. Well, this could have been a murder. So you should sentence him to 40 years. I do know that he has maybe some mental health issues. Maybe that's brought upon uh, the fact that he has been in and out of custody since he's been 12 years old. And if you have somebody who's in and out of custody since they've been 12 years old, I know that there is an issue, perhaps parenting, because I don't take the idea that there are bad seeds. I don't think a child is born and everybody says, I knew since the time that child was born, time when they threw uh, their bottle out of the crib or threw up on somebody, I knew that child was going to be a problem. So I think a lot of it has to do with environment. I think a lot of it has to do with parenting. Of course, there are issues with drugs and drugs, alcoholism, that really is not an excuse for behavior. So I want you to know that I, I reviewed everything and the reason why I, I remember your case and I remember you and the reason why I asked them to give me the stipulations again is because I want to be sure of everything that I read and make sure that my memory is correct on things. Um, of course, you know, this one is not an appropriate situation for probation because that's been tried with you before. All right. Uh, is there anything you, you wish to say before I pass ruling? All right. I, I want to let you know that I wish you the best in your life, but uh, you're going to be going to prison today. Uh, the cases were run concurrent with each other. And I want you to know, even though we're dealing a little bit in what ifs, you should really consider what ifs, because you could have killed officers that day. You could have killed people who were just at that hotel trying to get a good night's sleep. You understand? Yeah. Uh, and each cause number, the court will take into consideration 2024 CR 5164, 2024 CR 007370. Uh, I'm going to recommend for you uh, the therapeutic community uh, mental health unit. I don't know if they'll accept you into that unit based upon uh, your criminal history. But I do know that if you don't request it, you definitely will not be placed in that. I have no jurisdiction to order them to place you in that uh, community, but continue to ask for it. Yes, ma'am. All right. And how old are you? 43. All right. Uh, the court is going to sentence you to 35 years in the prison. and give you credit for any time served. Did you review the document entitled Trial Court Certification of Defendant's Rights to Appeal with your attorney? Yes, ma'am. Did you understand it and sign it? Yes, ma'am. All right, because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement, and because you waived your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. I realize that's, oh, and I'm sorry. In each case, there's an affirmative finding of deadly weapon. All right, we can go off the record. Here's the thing. I know that's a lot of time. And I realize how old you are. And I realize that prison time is hard time, right? But this is what I want you to understand. One, this is a part of punishment. But two, nobody ever knows how long they're going to live. Nobody ever knows what's going to be happening with parole. But what you need to do is make sure that you get your life in order, right? And be the best that you can be. And at prison, do not become institutionalized because it's easy to become institutionalized. It's easy to go to prison and become a part of this thing where 
you're just committing crimes in prison and other people are committing crimes around you or towards you at the prison. Don't become institutionalized. Just try to be the best that you can be each day. And, you know, look forward to go in there with the understanding that, hey, there's a great chance that I'm going to end up getting parole and just try to better yourself. So when you do get paroled, that you're ready to be in society, do the right things. And if you need to be on medications, to be on medications. And if I'm still here, who knows what, could, what will happen, right? But if I'm still here on the bench and you are lost, don't know where to go to get help, you can always come back and see me, okay? And I say, if I'm still on the bench, who knows? Maybe I win the lottery or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right. All right. So good luck to you. Okay. You. You're welcome. Thank you, Council. Thank you. Um, Adrian, I have this for you. All right. Who's here on Christina Wallace? Thank you. And probation. This is an application. Court is calling 2021 CR 4765B, State of Texas versus Christina Wallace. Can I have parties announced for the record for the state? Andrew Harris Adelman. For the defense? Chanty Shimoda for the defense. All right. And are you Ms. Wallace? Yes, ma'am. Counsel, have you received all of the discovery? I have, Judge. Did you review it with your client? I have talked to her about the case, yes, Judge. Court will find that the state is in compliance with discovery. Ms. Wallace, did you review the document entitled Application for Community Supervision with your attorney? Yes, Your Honor. Did you understand it and sign it? Yes, Your Honor. Did you review the plea bargain page with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, ma'am. According to the plea, punishment is to be assessed at three years in the prison. There's a $2,000 fine and the state recommends community supervision. Did you understand that to be the plea? Um, that means probation, right? All right, listen to me carefully. Yes, ma'am. The state is recommending your punishment be assessed at three years in the prison. There's a $2,000 fine. The state is recommending community supervision, which is probation. Do you understand that to be the plea? Yes, ma'am. Defense, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. State, is that the plea? Yes, Your Honor. Did you review the wave of appeal paragraph with your attorney? Did you under... All right, off the record for a moment. You want to check to see what's going on? Okay. All right, we'll go back on the record. Counselor, have there been any such motions? Uh, not ruled upon, no, Judge. Outside the agreement, the state is recommending that your term of probation be for three years. There be a TAP evaluation and 120 hours community service restitution. Did you understand those are recommendations from the state and the court does not have to follow those recommendations? Yes, ma'am, I did. Then to the offense as charged, how do you plead? Guilty, not guilty, or no contest? No contest, Your Honor. State any evidence? Intended in exhibit one at the task of the No, Judge. State you may be excused. Court will find that defendant has knowingly and voluntarily waived and consented to stipulation of testimony and stipulations. Court will accept into evidence state's exhibits one and attachments. And review the same. Rashawn, hmm? was all of this over a pair of glasses? All right, after reviewing state's exhibits one and attachments, the court will find there is sufficient evidence to find you guilty, and the court will find you guilty. Are you proceeding with sentencing? Yes, Your Honor. Anything you wish to say on behalf of your client? No, Judge. Well, just briefly, we asked the court to follow the plea agreement. Uh, she was in an abusive relationship. Uh, she went to Oklahoma to get away from that relationship. She ma maintains that she's been uh, clean for the last several years since she got out of that situation and uh, went away from the person 
whose drugs was the passengers, and um, she is looking to try to get her back life back on order. All right. So, do you have any children? Yes, ma'am. How old are they? Uh -huh. Being 14, both. I'm sorry, what? You're too fortunate, girl. All right. Has Child Protective Services been involved in your life? No, ma'am. My, my mom has my children right now. And how long has she had them? Um, for the past five years. So, when did you start using drugs and what's your drug of choice? Um, pills mostly, mostly pills and alcohol, but um, I started using drugs when I was in junior high. And what were you using? Um, like Xanax, Vicodin, alcohol. So how did she end up at the Bear County Jail? She, uh, she ended up in Oklahoma, Judge, and uh, she maintains that she wasn't aware of a court date, which issued the warrant, that she got picked up in Oklahoma. All right, what part of Oklahoma? Oklahoma City, ma'am. I was with my father. All right, how far did you go in school? Um, so I have, um, I'm like 19 credits away from getting my business degree. Okay. And where did you go to business school? I'm sorry, ma'am. Where did you go to business school? Wyndham. I'm sorry. I have my credits through Wyndham and I also have my credits to SAC, San Antonio College. I'm 19 credits away. So when did you end up at San Antonio College? When I was in, um. What I, year? 2005. And then um, I started having children. I stopped going. And then I recently started picking up trying to get my credit, college credits then. And how did you meet Kevin Miller? <laughs> That's the story in itself. Actually, I met Kevin Miller through um, a friend of mine. Um, I was in an abusive relationship, and he was supposed to help me, and it turned out to be worse than the one I was in. I'm sorry, it turned out what? It turned out to be worse than the one I was in. I was actually in a, in a really abusive relationship. The man I was with had stabbed me, and um, so a friend of mine actually referred me to go stay with him. His, he had a nice family, just that, but it wasn't the case at all, actually. He actually turned out to be more abusive than the last one. All right. And so were there other things going on with you, with your drug use? How were you supporting your habit? I was working, ma'am. Doing what? Quiet, please. I apologize, but. Doing what? I was working at Michelin Tires. Doing what at Michelin Tires? Selling tires. And this friend who recommended you or introduced you to Travis Miller, what's that friend's name? Stephanie. Stephanie what? Little. All right. And is she going to be asked to be transferred to Oklahoma? I think she's fine with being here for now. I'm okay with being here for now. I want to take a program to have a Haven for Hope. Okay. All right. Court is going to find you guilty. The court will sentence you to three years in prison, suspended and probated for six years. There's a $2,000 fine. That will be probated defensive driving, regular reporting by Zoom or in person, regular random UAs, proof of employment within 30 days of release. There's to be no employment as a home health care provider or with minors. There's to be no unsupervised contact with minors. She's not allowed to live in a residence with minors. There's to be no contact with Kevin Miller or Stephanie Little. Tap evaluation in custody, follow recommendations. And I'll do a referral for Esperanza Court and that will be in custody. And when Esperanza Court interviews you, you need to be 100% honest with them 
about what you've been doing and how you've been making your money, okay? Yes, ma'am. What is the Esperanza Court? Uh, it is a court that will help you get your life in order okay. if you want to get your life in order. Yes, ma'am. There's to be 120 hours of community service restitution. I'm going to order parenting classes. Once she completes parenting classes, the community service hours will be deemed satisfied. Field visits one time per month for four months. 120 sober meetings in 120 days. And if you need any type of counseling, because I know you said previously you were in a abusive relationship. If you need counseling for that, let probation know, okay? Uh, probation, is there anything else? Is there anything else you need from the court to be successful? Did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal with your attorney? Yes, sir. Oh, Did you? I just want to ask you about drug court. Uh, drug court, they uh, have a, they don't have enough funding okay. at this time. Okay. Call your congressman, write to your congressman, tell your congressman what a good uh, program it is. And honestly, it saves the taxpayers money when people successfully complete that because housing people at the jail and at the prison is more expensive than giving somebody treatment and hopefully getting their life back on track. All right, did you review the document entitled trial court certification of defendants rights to appeal yes, with your attorney? Did you understand it? Yes, and did you sign it? Yes, ma'am. Because this is a plea bargain agreement, because I followed your plea bargain agreement and because you waive your right to appeal, you do not have the court's permission to appeal. Because this is a felony conviction, you're not allowed to own or possess any weapons or ammunition. If you have a question over what a weapon or ammunition is, you'll need to speak to an attorney. Do you understand? Yes, ma'am. All right. And we're off the record. In this court, to be successful on probation, communication is key. Yes, if you have any issues or a question, uh, let probation know. If you feel as though they're not addressing it, you can always come back to this court. You understand? Yes, ma'am. So if you ever think you're going to use... You need to contact your probation officer and let them know. All right. Yes, All right. Good luck to you. Thanks so much. You're welcome.